hello everyone and welcome back so now it's time sorry for the delay uh, i was uh, busy with some stuff but now what is the next video in the microservice series is okay let's deploy the the lambda so we already have a nest uh, nest js application let's say very basic nest js app and we already decided that we are going to use aws serverless app express so let's say this is the express app sorry uh, nest js app what additional things we are going to add on top of that so this is nest js app using nest cli you created this right you will just include this aws serverless express which we will do we'll create a lambda.ts just another file why you need this lambda.ts because lambda is nothing but a function and we need to write this function so this function we'll put inside this lambda.ts okay this is sitting in the lambda.ts file and now next important thing is nothing but uh, writing a simple aws cdk stack that is going to take this code to aws lambda so now next part is writing a cdk stack And in CDK stack, nothing much. Uh, we'll just write a simple stack where we can have a single lambda and API gateway. Okay, so this will contain a lambda and API gateway. And you already know the how we deploy, how we create a lambda. Lambda is nothing but a function, but wh where is the code of the function? So whatever the nest just app we have, we will zip it. We'll first create a build of it because Lambda is not going to run your TypeScript code. You will just create a build. So it will just give you a build output, build folder. Then you need a node modules and zip it. Just create archive.zip file. Dot zip file of it and then dot zip file we will just pass in our lambda this is the lambda we are creating uh, let me just create a border it's fine so this is the api gateway so lambda because lambda is nothing but a function which needs an execution code and here because it's a service it's a very big code you also need to bundle node module. So the size of this content is around 50 MB or 100 MB depends on dependencies. But it is, it is always around 50 MB of code, including the build output, node modules, package JSON and all. And then you will, in Lambda, while we write uh, Lambda using CDK stack, what we do is we just create a new Lambda function. And in the arguments, we specify the zip file. So this is our code, uh, REST API. I just created this is simple skeleton. And what I will do is I will create a new folder in this, which is nest.js. I will just copy the folder name first. Rename. This can be another project, but infra. Okay. So this is my nest.js app. And this is infra and we are going to deploy it through the uh, GitLab CI from this monorepo. But first you can try to understand it without monorepo also. This is your infra app where you are going to bootstrap a CDK app, AWS CDK app that is going to bundle and that is going to, I mean, what that CDK stack will contain the Lambda and the API gateway. And inside a Lambda, you will just pass the bundle of this code because when you build this, what it will create, it will create a dist folder, right? This is the output and the package JSON node modules. This is the, these are the two things you need to bundle. So I can try to bootstrap this application CD apps. That is the infra. So CDK, yes, CDK in it minus minus template type script let me see if it works okay this is the correct command language equal to type script i hope it won't create a folder inside this 
okay you can see this infra is bootstrapped it has a default infra and this is the stack now what we are going to this is the default stack i will just remove it i will just uh, use a simple stack which contains the lambda and the api gateway and here is uh, what my code looks like so this is a simple lambda function we have and we can just set the lambda runtime we can just we, we need to import a lambda from this and then this lambda function this is the handler name and this is the asset like your zip file in which you actually created the bundle of your nest.js uh, code with all the dependencies and all and then your handler name the function name which you have added inside your lambda dot handler so it should be lambda is the file name right lambda dot ts we are going to create here inside this source i will create a lambda dot ts this is going to create convert this nestjs into lambda function and this is the infra where i'm just bootstrapping my stack with the lambda function okay and i will just change a little bit things like rest api handler and if there is a runtime environment like a uh, environment like uh, dev productions so you can also pass that that we will try to pass that at runtime i mean this is deprecated right now so i will prefer using node.js 20.x this is the node.js version which your lambda will be using once you deploy it and we are deploying this whole microservice and this is the asset so here you are going to pass the zip file zip file which contains the bundle of your whole microservice the build folder uh, node modules and whatever the outside files you have because this is what uh, we are going to push to aws as a lambda and inside this dist folder because once you build it dist folder will also have the lambda.js file here right so if you just go and try to build this project work nest build and inside this folder i'll got the lambda.js file so this is the the file which lambda needs to look into and lambda.js is not just a it will have some code and it requires all the dependencies so you also need to have a node module folder zipped and sent to the lambda for the runtime execution okay this infra has contains the one single stack uh bin live stack and you need to have a api gateway so we need a api gateway and we are going to do the proxy integration so it will be like this uh lambda rest api and this lambda function we need to pass proxy true that means we are doing proxy integration of uh, this lambda with the api gateway so whatever the request comes to the api gateway will directly goes to this lambda for this particular stage because you can have a runtime you can define the stage based on your no based on your environment like development production staging testing and this will change based on that you can just make it dynamic but all the that so what this stack will be creating i on the aws as a resources lambda and api gateway api gateway is a proxy integrated api gateway for this lambda because we are passing the lambda here so all the requests will direct will be delegated to the api lambda here we have defined the handler lambda dot handler inside this zip path i think we also need to specify the path inside build folder because we will zip build a, uh, inside the zip what all we have is a build folder or dist folder based on whatever the directory is plus node modules so it will be based on that lambda dot handler this is a function which will bootstrap your full node.js microservice and as it as you already know this is the lambda it's not going to be running 24 7 i mean the request comes lambda will bootstrap lambda will serve your response serve your request and dies i mean still it will be hot lambda until unless if consecutive requests keeps coming it doesn't need to bootstrap again and again the whole node.js runtime environment but yeah it's lambda it's not like your http server which is running and you just send a request and get the response back but performance wise they are awesome 
if you talk about the runtime performance of the node.js with the java or any other runtime free runtime languages node.js is ahead because bootstrap time of because lambda is cold uh, and it become fort when the request comes through the api gateway or somebody triggers it like s3 or someone but it it can it can activate itself in minimum number of time there is a benchmark for it okay so this is what the aws cdk stack will be creating for us the lambda and api gateway and we'll deploy it so the only thing is i can actually run the cdk deploy command for this by setting up my aws credentials but i need to just worry about this and then this is stack right inside lambda there are lots of other things like okay environment variables what all environment you are you wanted to pass this is the object these are the environments which you wanted to populate at the runtime okay node env database url any credentials which your application might need all those things you can specify here and for cloudwatch logging i think there is a log format log log retentions you can specify that you wanted to use a cloudwatch and log retention is for these many number of days okay all these options we can specify with the cloudwatch what are the other arguments i mean we can take a look uh, the environments which you can specify uh, log retention inside log retentions we can specify cdk dot aws logs aws logs dot retention policy dot i think there is a five days or ten days something like this you can specify 60 days 30 days there is a 30 what did i do wrong hcdk.aws logs dot retention policy so retention days retention in number of days and here you can just define the retention so all the other argument okay what is the description of the lambda once it is deployed what you will see on the aws console memory size all the arguments you can specify here memory size okay what is the runtime runtime you can change and it currently it's a node.js 20 function name function name if you want to specify a function name some dynamic function name you can specify api handler and here we can have some kind of a dynamic variable stage because the same lambda you can deploy on different environment and this stage variable we can get from the props we will receive it through the props we will decide how we are going to configure the props and these are the environment variables node.js runtime environment variables and there are other parameters which you can specify concurrency options current version options you can specify argument here timeout timeout is important because if let's say if your request is taking too much time then what is the default timeout you wanted to set cdk dot duration dot hours days milliseconds i think there is second and timeout is let's say 10 seconds default is also something like this timeout and then initial policy because this is aws world and your lambda might be doing 10 different things reading writing from s3 or writing to a uh, writing to an event bridge sns and all those things so you need your lambda needs to have a policy to execute some commands on the resources if lambda is writing something on the sns that means your microservice is doing asynchronous communication if your your microservice is nothing but a simple hello world app then that's fine but if you are doing lots of stuff if you are putting message to the sns you are reading and writing through s3 then you need to allow you need to attach all these policies policies that i'm giving an access to this lambda to write or uh, write on the any of the sns topic so these are the policies which you are attaching similarly if you want to allow this lambda to access the aws s3 resources you can keep adding this will keep going and this is the lambda 
which is attached to the API gateway. This, this we have already seen in the CDK videos that how we, what are the runtime parameters which you can specify on the Lambda. Timeout, memory size, description, log retentions on the CloudWatch handler, uh, function name which you can change for particular environment. And these are the environment which you wanted to pass like anything uh, which is dynamic, database URL, SNS topic name, some runtime, auth zero credentials, access key, secret key and all. Either you get it from a secret manager or pass it here based on security which you choose. But this is your stack will look like. Okay. Now let's try to, for now we, what we will do is this is the application. In initial version, I will just create a bundle of it, create a manual a zip folder, put the zip folder in the root of the project and then we will try to deploy it. Next, we will write a script cell script that will do the npm run build npm install npm run test and create a build output a zip file which contains the node modules and dist folder and then through the cdk deploy in the same script it will it will kick the cdk stack cdk deploy command uh, picking up this zip file and deploying to aws so yeah i know it's taking a little bit of time but in the next part i will be covering uh, these things